because I'm a human being and I went through an intense amount of struggle mentally, emotionally to get to the top of that. I had to overcome my own inner demons. Because when you go on a route of entrepreneurship, you're on your own. If you're struggling, you're gonna, your business will struggle. And that was, that was me. Something I call catalyst integration. It's where you take, like we're all haunted by the past. We're all haunted by certain things that have happened to us that still trigger us. How do you release those boulders inside of you? And take those and transmute those, right? Integrate those in your life so that you can expand again out of your comfort zone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I'm your host, Nikki Baloo, and boy, do we have an exciting guest lined up for you today. Today's guest is a U.S. national memory champion. This man is the very best in his field, and we here at The Thought Leader Revolution bring top thought leaders at the top of their game to come and teach you how they became that. I am speaking, of course, of none other than the one, the only, the legendary John Graham. Welcome to the show, John. (laughs) It's probably got to be the best intro I've ever received. Thank you. (laughs) I'm glad to hear that. That's what I was going for. You're very welcome. So, John, um, first of all, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Secondly, we do this show because we believe in the majesty of the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is society's greatest hero. It's because he has a dream and he's willing to go after it that all progress in society happens. And with the exception of the men and women who fight, bleed, and die so the rest of us get to live under the blanket of freedom, they're the most important people we have. And they listen to the show, my my listeners, because they want to learn. Not from me. I'm here every week. They want to learn from you. But before they can open themselves to you and to your message. They got to get to know you. So tell us your backstory. How'd you get to be the great John Graham? (laughs) You know, it's easy to say I'm a three-time national memory champion and all the glory, but the secret is I'm a human being and I went through an intense amount of struggle mentally, emotionally to get to the top of that. And as an entrepreneur, as a creative, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. So You know, I've always been someone to strive for more. I've always questioned the rules of society and like why people are going to jobs and why we're being told to do certain things. And I've always wanted to excel. So I think I've what's always driven me is just I never fit in anywhere. I never liked the conformity of things. And I always thought I could excel as something greater than um, than most people could. So that was the the driver for me was just not liking the molds of society and the molds around people. So I, I decided to just follow my heart and go with something that I thought I could be extraordinary in. And it led me, um, as we can talk about, through a lot of anxiety, a lot of panic, a lot of strife, and a lot of reward uh, to get to the top of a field and a mastery that I think some people have no idea what it takes or just imagine what it can be like. But it's pretty it's pretty glorious when you master something that a lot of people look up to. It's a very glorious thing. I want to unpack what you said about not fitting in anywhere. I think there's a beautiful ad that Apple made when Steve Jobs came back to Apple after his decade plus layoff. And the ad is called Think Different. And it begins uh, the original version of it with a voiceover by the great actor Richard Dreyfus. And it later on, Steve Jobs himself made a version of the ad with his voiceover. And the entire ad was black and white with some of the greatest visionaries, change makers, and thought leaders the world has ever seen. And it begins something like this. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the visionaries, the round pegs in the square holes. I mean, just saying those words gives me goosebumps because I think that the people that listen to this shows, they are the misfits, the visionaries, the square pegs in the round holes or the round pegs in the square holes, however way you want to say it. 
They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. That part, they're not fond of rules, that's me. I ain't fond of freaking rules. Screw the damn rules. The rules are just somebody else's idea of how I should live my life and I ain't interested in that. I'm going to live my life the way I see it. And I believe that's what you're saying, isn't it, John? Yeah, it's conformity. You know, I was in high school and surrounded by a group of people every morning who talked about cars and engines and and like girls and like certain things that everyone taught everyone said the same things everyone thought the same things and i'm sitting there in my head thinking like why does everyone think the same way i don't even like some of the stuff people are talking about i always felt like that misfit i always felt like why are people always following the uh the crowd and just like conforming to everything and i just always had this voice inside that didn't agree Um, but like many people, I followed that crowd for years. And I think that was part of the reason I became so anxious and so troubled, uh, mentally, emotionally early on is because I followed what everyone should be doing. I got a job, I graduated, I went to school, I did all the things you were supposed to do, even though internally I had a mission and a calling to, to express my authenticity. And I'll say this, like, this is the year like 2024 is the year where everyone who's square pegging around hall, the misfits, the people who didn't fit in, now we're going to start to shine because authenticity, and we're talking about real human um, moments and, and real human feelings are going to come to the forefront. People want genuine emotion. People want genuine authenticity and, and real humanity to show instead of the mask and the charade that everyone's putting on to conform. So I think if you're a misfit and you're listening to this, this is good news because people are craving this. People are craving reality and and don't want to follow along anymore. No, they don't, brother. No, they don't. So let's go back to your story. So you saw that you were a misfit and you didn't fit in. What led you to choose a path to go and become national memory champion three times? I'm sitting in a cubicle in Denver. I work for a bankruptcy office. It was my first salary job. Bored out of my mind. I was like scrolling on Twitter all day. I was a misfit. I didn't, I did the bare minimum, right? Just, I was a horrible employee, even though I was a really good kid. And this book, Moonwalking with Einstein, there was an article about it. It's this book, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything. And I thought this book called to my soul. Like this is, talking about something beyond a human capacity of what we believe is possible with the mind. I'm like, I'm in, I'm buying that book. So I went to a Barnes and Noble, bought that book at 20, I was like 27 years old. This was 10 years ago. And just learned that people could do really incredible things with their mind. I'm not a savant. I'm not a genius. I'm not anything like that. But I found an avenue to explore a realm in my mind and achievement that I did not think was possible. So that was the start of it was just like, this is it. This is something that geeks me out, nerds me out. And I want to pursue this and see where it takes me. That's a really cool title for a book, Moonwalking with Einstein. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so tell me about the book. The book was written by a journalist who went to the U.S. Memory Championship expecting to find people who are savants, people who had photographic memories, geniuses. And what he found was there's a bunch of ordinary Americans who learned mental techniques and strategies and associations, visualization, imagination, to learn to, in a structured, organized way, and using creativity to memorize more than we thought was possible. Like, we're talking about memorizing a deck of shuffle cards within minutes or seconds. Talking about hundreds of strings of numbers, names. I was like, I really want to see if this is possible because this guy expected geniuses. I think we're all conditioned like, no, geniuses know this. No, photographic memory is real and it's all a myth. I thought I've been lied to. (laughs) Like people want you to believe you're ordinary. You can't do that stuff and you're showered with that your whole life. So I was like, someone is telling me that it's possible. And so I think Not only did I learn it was possible with the mind, these extraordinary things, but once you start doing these extraordinary things with your mind, you start learning, you can do it in business, you can do it in relationships, you can do it in all these different realms once you excel in one area. And that was the gateway for me. 
So you read this book, you realized that the path to becoming extraordinary wasn't so much about having been favored by God with a touch of genius, but it was about a decision that you made within yourself to say, I'm going to excel in this field and I'm willing to suck before I'm any, before I'm even mediocre. I'm willing to be mediocre before I'm average. I'm willing to be average before I'm okay. I'm willing to be okay before I'm good. I'm willing to be good before I'm great. I'm willing to be great before I'm a master. I'm willing to be a master before I'm the best that ever lived. That's what you're saying in essence, isn't it? Yeah. I'm saying too, on the reverse side, if you believe that people are ordained to be geniuses or predestined, you're, you're cursing yourself, right? Because if you believe God gifted you with certain abilities over others or avenues, like you're missing out. And so I started from the low. I started from not believing any of that. Like someone convinced me from this book that I could do it. And I took, I took that advantage. And that's why people listen to this podcast. They're looking for someone just like them to say, you can do it too and inspire them. And and that's why I'm here too, is because shit, I've been through a ton of stuff, insanely lows. And I've done, I've done incredible things, but it was because of something like that book that said, no, all this BS you're listening to, or people say, no, you got to be a genius. No, you got to be pre-qualified. No, you have to have credentials. No, you don't need any of that. You just need to have an interest and a drive and you can achieve that. Yeah. 1000%. 1000%. Um, you know, about a year ago, I went through a journey. Um, I was 55 at the time, 56 now. And I used to be one of the top fitness trainers in North America. I'd worked with Olympic champions and, um, I loved it, but I left that field and I got into the world of, of, uh, business coaching and advisory services. And something in my mind shifted and I was not nearly as focused on my health and fitness as I had been when I was a trainer. And over about a dozen years, I put on about 50 plus pounds. And every year I tell myself, this is the year you're going to turn it around. And I didn't. Every year it got a little bit worse. I got a little heavier. Till I looked myself in the, in, in the mirror and I saw my belly hanging over my belt. And I was so disgusted that I said, fuck it. No more. This will not be how I look and feel anymore. And I made a decision that I needed a coach because even though I used to be a coach, I wasn't one anymore in this field. And I found somebody who had a track record of success with people like me, my age, etc. And I hired him. And in a six month period, I went from weighing 227 to weighing 169. So it was a 58 pound drop. Big ass fucking deal. Yeah. And um, when I did that, I realized how small I'd been playing in so many areas. Now, since then, I asked this guy to help get me ready for a competition. So I put back on about 20 pounds trying to get ready for this competition. I've got injuries that I got to overcome. So God's given me a whole bunch more adversities to deal with, but that's cool. It's part of the process that we're going for it. Um, but what I realized, as I said, is how small I've been playing and achieving this type of result showed me that achieving big results in other areas of my life is not only possible, it, 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 it is what I'm here on this earth to do is to just look at something and push myself harder. And in any event, um, 2022 and the first half of 2023 business wise were eh, not horrible, horrible, but not great in 2023, especially the first half of it, just income was not where it needed to be. And I just said, I'm going to turn this around in October. We had a really good month. November, we had a decent month. In December, we had a really good month. January, we had an excellent month. February, we had a good month. And March so far has been a very, very good. And what this showed me again was that for me, if I put my focus on something and I do it in the right way with a great coach like Mark Von Muser, 
well, you know, I not only is he my coach right now, we're working on a couple projects together, um, then I can do it. And it, it sounds to me like you made a decision, you were inspired by something. Um, so walk us through the process of from the moment that you said, okay, I read this book, I'm going to take this on. How did you go from there to being memory champion? And how long did it take? So I read, yes, yeah, a really good question. Really important too. It's a journey. 2014, I read the book. And I started, tink, you know, dinking around with the techniques, learning how to do this. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go to a competition. I'm going to get a certificate, read a, search, read a search and level, get a goal and call it good and tell everyone how amazing I did. Well, I got my ass kicked in that competition, <laughs> like completely bombed. I went to the world championship in China after only maybe four to six months of training on my own and just completely couldn't handle the pressure. Uh, I was using really poor techniques. And so at that point, you can either give up and be like, okay, I tried, whatever. And I think a lot of people understand, give up. But I thought, no, I'm going to learn from these abysmal because I, I could feel I could do better. And I really wanted to to ascend. So what you learn like you, with a coach, right? I started meeting all these people from all over the world, from Germany, from, from Asia, from, you know, like even from Americans, top Americans. And they were teaching me their techniques and where I failed, right? You need someone with insight, with experience to look at you, guide you along and say, hey, correct here, correct here, correct here, right? And then you'll perform and you listen to those coaches, you listen to those people. There's no different from any other realm. Like I think you try it on your own, you're going to hit, you're going to fail, you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. And I did too. So I took that experience. I trained for a couple more months and I competed at the U S championship a few months later. And I got a seventh place in the country. And I thought, okay, there's something to this, right? From that point on, it took me three years of training to win the national national title. Okay. In the meantime, I was on TV shows with Mike Tyson. I was I was still training in the meantime. And actually, to the coaching credit, I took the initiative to reach out to the top. Because memory has 10 different disciplines. There's words, there's cards, there's numbers, there's names, right? I sought out the best person in the world in each discipline. I looked at all the scores. I said, who's the best in names? Who's the best in cards? Who's the best in words? And I messaged them. I befriended all of them. And not just like neediness, like, hey, help me out, but like giving some value, helping them to giving them what they needed. But I developed relationships and they taught me what they did. They gladly shared their techniques, how they did it. And I started to morph my my own abilities and their techniques to improve in each of the disciplines to to really excel. And I thought I asked the question, if I'm going to win the U.S. championship, what do I need to be good at? How do I need to be good? What scores do I need in that? That's all I needed. From then, it was just training, blood, sweat, tears, and practice. And I, and I reached that three and a half years later. So the entire journey from the moment that you decided to uh, read this book and go down the path to your first national title was how long? Between three and a half and four years. So I just want my listener to really understand why this is an important thing to understand. Because if you are listening to this today and let's say you're in business and let's say you're struggling, let's say you're doing, I don't know, 60K, 80K, 100K a year. And you're telling yourself, I want to, I want to make a quarter million, half a million, a million, two million, five million a year. If your expectation is that you're going to have that quantum leap in results in a week, a month, a quarter, you're an idiot. <laughs> it takes time. It takes time from the time you make the decision to the time you actually start taking the actions to the time those actions bear fruit. It takes time. So we're talking three and a half, four years for you. And most people come in here and they listen to this and they go, why am I not a gazillionaire already? I, I, I listened to your podcast yesterday 
and I made a two phone calls. Why am I not a gazillionaire already? Right? And I think this is an important point for both of us to hammer home for people. You got to be in it for the long haul. You got to be in it to win it. it, it can't, it's got to be from beginning to victory, not from beginning to an artificial timeline. Yeah, you you make a decision, you're you're just in it. You don't even have a timeline. You just say, I'm going to win a championship. I'm going to be a millionaire. And you don't put a cap, a how, you don't figure out the middle part. You just that's your mindset the whole way, right? My mindset was, yeah, I'm gonna win. It's inevitable. If I keep this up, if I hit my scores, I'm following the best advice in the world. Like it's just inevitable. Right? I'm not expecting I think the reason I failed in that first world championship after training a couple months because I had that initial mindset of why am I not a gazillionaire now? Why didn't I hit this? I was trying to be a grandmaster. I was trying to hit certain scores and I bombed because I was forcing it in the way I thought it would be and it didn't work, right? So I learned from that short term, got to be a gazillionaire mindset to like stepping back and like, no, follow a proven way, follow the best advice in the world and it will be an inevitability. Honestly, that really is what we need to offer to people. Uh, for myself, in this journey of now wanting to do a competition, uh, a bodybuilding competition, um, I started that process, God, back in, I think, November. It's now March. Um, I went from eating to drop weight to eating to gain weight, to gain muscle and Boy, that was tough. I did not understand how much food I'd need to eat. I just had no conception. And there were days where I'm like, I'm stuffed to the gills. It's 10 o'clock at night and I need to eat another 600 calories worth of food. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to even look at food, but I had to do it. And, um, you know, and just a, a few weeks ago, I, I injured my shoulder. It's 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 better, but it's by no means ready for prime time. Um, and I've got to find a way to still train. Um, I can't do certain exercises, that's for sure. But I don't get to stop training. You, you know what I mean? I got to still train. So I'm still training. And if you're looking at this, you're listening to this, you're thinking, I, I'm in business, I'm making whatever you're making, and I want to make a million dollars this year. Let's just put that out there because I think for a lot of people, that's a very beguiling number. It's a number that is attractive to people. You have got to say, I want to make a million dollars. And you've got to say, I'm going to do it over the course of a year. And you've got to be okay that it won't, maybe it won't necessarily be 2024, or even 2025 or 2026. But as long as that is the goal and that you are learning what you have to do and who you have to become in order to do that, it'll be inevitable, just like you said, it was for you. You need a you need a North Star mindset. When you're when you're shoving down those calories, like you said, the hardest part, you can't be thinking about how miserable it is. You gotta remember your North Star. You gotta remember the end goal. Right? So same thing. I gotta remember when I'm sitting down in training and looking at flashcards of numbers or learning to memorize decks of cards, it's annoying sometimes, but I still have that vision of standing on stage and holding that trophy. Look, I got three of them right there. I, that's the North Star mindset. I so see those. Like, They're good looking trophies, yeah, eh? Yeah, National yeah. championships. Nice. Nice, buddy. So every time I'm sitting there training and my mind's saying, I don't want to do this right now. I want to go outside. I want to play with my friends. I want to like, whatever. I remember that trophy. I remember that moment. I want this moment. And that's what keeps you in the game, right? The inevitable moment where you achieve it. That's the North Star. You got to have that North Star look up and see it there every time. Otherwise, you're going to make decisions to, to give up to, oh, this is too hard, right? Because it is very hard in the middle of it. It's no question. No question. Amen. Well said. Well said. So you became a three-time U.S. national memory champion. And then you also went on an entrepreneurial path. Tell us about that journey and what that's been like. Yeah. Same time, like 2014 was the fork in the road for me. I went down the memory path. I sold everything I owned. My wife had, well, was a girlfriend at the time. 
and I traveled the world. My backpack around the world. That's where I did my first memory competition. Coming back, we could have lived anywhere. We could have done anything. And I thought, you know what? I, of course, I'm going to have to make money, but I really want to start a business. Like, and I tried everything. I've tried websites. I've tried real estate. I tried everything. And I realized early on, like after I failed in my first four businesses, failed to me means like I, I gave up and went on to something else. I thought the problem was the business. I realized the problem was me because I personally, and this is where I'll share my struggles. I struggled with anxiety, overwhelm, mental paralysis, um, even developing nasty panic attacks. I was having debilitating panic attacks and we can talk about that too. But the problem wasn't that the businesses weren't working is that I wasn't following through because I was self-sabotaging, right? I was afraid Mm -hmm. to step out and make certain calls or I was like, And I would make excuses like, oh, this isn't the right business. I'm not aligned to it. Let's do something else. When in fact, I was dealing with this crippling anxiety and procrastinating and knew what I needed to do. We all know we got to pick up the phone or send the email or put ourselves out there, post on social media, but we don't do it, right? So it's not that you need another business course all the time. It's that we need to improve ourselves. So we not just take action, brute force ourselves but overcome the limitations that are within us. So when I started going after entrepreneurship and working on my own, I had to overcome my own inner demons. Because when you go on a route of entrepreneurship, you're on your own, right? You're on your own at first. And of course you can have coaches and mentors, but your success depends on your action and your ability to move forward and be decisive. And if you're struggling, you're going to, your business will struggle. And that was, that was me. Yeah, that makes sense, man. That totally makes sense. Um, so once you figured out that you were the bottleneck, how'd you overcome it? You know, I tried brute forcing it at first. Everyone wants to hack their mind and get into a flow state, remove distractions, be productive. And that was sort of my <clears throat> method at first, right? I think everyone kind of tells you, or you kind of hear these people like Tony Robbins and others like get into a, a state, jack yourself up, perform, right? And everyone wants to be motivated at all times. And I thought that was the answer. I thought I need some supplements, some nootropics, some meditations, get in the zone, right? And I'll be good. But in fact, it was a performance, right? That's a mass. That's a performative, like pump up state. And we always crash back down to our level of conditioning. So for me, all that mental gymnastics is, it only gets you so far. And I'm saying this as a memory champion of a master of the mind, right? Your mind will only get you so far because there's a lot of conditioning that's holding you back subconscious. And there's also a lot of suppressed emotion. People call it trauma. You call it whatever you want that holds you back. So I started going like, what's the real root of this? Like the real deep, raw root of this. And how do I transcend it? And once I stopped trying to force my mind to do things or force it to focus or, you know, manipulate all these things with my mind, I realized the mind was the issue. And I started to learn how to release control of my mind. Right. A lot of what I teach and what I do now is is actually counterintuitive to a lot of the stuff that's being taught today because to get to the actual root of anxiety panic overwhelm all of these things which like to transcend it for good to release it for good you got to go deep you can't just tell your mind to believe something else or affirm something all the time you have to number one release control of your mind which is very hard for people because we're conditioned to you know, brute force our mind. You have to release control of your mind and, and get into harmony. And you have to, number two, release all the suppressed emotions that are causing you to pacify or cope or soothe yourself, like to avoid the things that you're needing to do. Because we all have, we've all pushed away experiences in our life and emotions that are shoved down inside of our cells of our body, right? 
we want that out. We want to express that out so we can transcend our trauma and we can expand as a human being and we don't have these destructive patterns all the time. So that's that's the journey I went. I did not want to take Xanax. I did not want good. to do all these soothing strategies. I wanted to go deep and like get rid of this stuff for good. Yeah, so you did that, you got rid of it. What was the outcome? Well, the outcome is I'm still in progress, right? The biggest thing is no more panic attacks, no more waking up with dread, heavy anxiety in my body, no more tightness in my chest, no more hyperventilating, no more like dizziness, brain fog, all of those things that come with overwhelm, no more shutting down and freezing up. I used to I used to freeze up like a deer in the headlights when I would work or when I would memorize, like you just lock up, right? So these things that used to limit me are no more, right? Now I'm onto the next thing, but it's still an evolving process. There's still, there's still shit in there. There's still conditioning that, that always prevents us from expanding to our next level. Right on. So tell us, John, about your business. What is it exactly that you do right now? Who do you help? I help high performers. What's the main problem they face? Yeah. Yeah. I help high performers transcend and release panic attacks, crippling anxiety for good, like forever. Because that used to be me, right? And people who are high performers, top performers, everyone Mm -hmm. listening to this, right? That's you, is people wanting to excel in something. If anxiety and panic and the mind and, and everything is shutting you down, that's an issue, right? There's no there's no business strategy that will help you because you all know what you need to do on the ne- to get to the next level or the next action. If you are if something internal is causing the issue, we need to transcend that. Right. So I help people not with mental strategies. The real root of this is emotional. So I help people number one, get themselves into a regulated state that's mandatory regulated nervous system because most of us are always busy busy our minds go 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 and anxiety thrives in that state so we regulate we have to learn how to release this trapped emotion any negative thought or any negative emotion what do you do in that moment and then the third thing i teach people is something i call catalyst integration it's where you take like we're all haunted by the past we're all haunted by certain things that have happened to us that still trigger us how do you release those boulders inside of you? So they're not triggering you anymore. They're not haunting you anymore. They're not affecting you anymore. And take those and transmute those, right? Integrate those in your life so that you can expand again out of your comfort zone. So those are the, we go deep. Like this is real actual work only for people willing to go through and feel through some of their darkest suppressed energies that they've faced, right? But if you're willing to do that, you can transcend that and expand beyond the limits that you currently have in front of you. Cool, yeah. So if someone's interested in finding out more about you, about the work that you do, get in touch with you, get on your calendar, what's the best way? Yeah, go to releasepanic.com. I've got a program called Released. It's an eight week method really simple on those three strategies I just talked about where I walk through and really guide you in a simple way, not again, a cognitive way, but how do we release control of that conditioning? How do we regulate you so that these panic situations and this visceral anxiety can really literally release from your being, right? So that you can transform. And it's all, all the information's there. If you have any questions too, you can reach out to me, john at memoryjohn.com. And I'd be happy to answer any personal emails as well. Okay. So say the URL one more time. Releasepanic.com. Good URL. All right. We'll make sure that puts that's put in the show notes. So John, we finish every episode by asking you our guest expert for your top three expert action steps. These are your best three pieces of advice in bullet point form that you want my listener to take his life to the next level with? What say you? Number one is to make peace with every single thing that bothers you. 
Every single thing that bothers you is limiting you. It's triggering you. It's affecting you. It's spiraling you. Making peace with that. That's how we release these boulders inside. The second thing, stop blocking your distractions. Stop trying to push away distractions. Embrace distractions. Allow everything in. Stop trying to control everything around you. You're going to perform better. And then third thing that comes to my mind, something I teach people is unconditional love. And what that means to me is unconditionally accepting everyone around you. I mean, this goes with my first bullet. Making peace with the people that bother you, making peace with the situations. Having unconditional acceptance allows you to flow with life, anything that's brought your way, and you become invincible. You know, these are three really good expert action steps. The second one is one I've never heard before. Yeah. And in fact, it goes against everything I know to be true. Exactly. Um, but you're saying embrace distractions. You got to give me some more about that. Yeah, absolutely. I The reason I've won three U.S. memory championships is because I train, I call it chaos training. So when all my competitors are at home putting earmuffs on, trying to practice in nice, peaceful settings and memorize, I do the opposite. I will get down, I will drop down, do 20 push-ups, holding my breath really quickly. I'll put a podcast in my ear, one that I really want to listen to, blast it on full volume, and then get up and try to memorize something. Like try to memorize my deck of cards or my numbers or whatever I'm practicing on to induce, to produce chaos. Because when I'm in that moment on stage, there's pressure. And if I'm training for conditions that are harder than the event, then the, the event's easy. Every single time I've won the championship in the final event, I've been like, I'm so glad I trained in this chaos. I'm so glad I even trained with my toddler daughters trying to pull the cards out of my hands, like in front of them. I'm, because I embrace the pains in my body. I embrace the heart rate. I embrace the noise. I embrace it all that allows me to live in that moment instead of trying to, oh shit, force, force that voice away, force that away, force that away, block that out. Because that's more control and more. Uh, more effort. Look, you said a lot of smart things. That's the best thing you've said all podcast. And um, I'm just going to tell you as a man who's the world's greatest podcast guest, and I teach people how to guest, you want to lead with this next time, not end with this. This is fucking brilliant. Um, I've never heard this. I've interviewed the smartest people in the world. They call me the Napoleon Hill of the modern age because I literally have interviewed the smartest, most accomplished people in the fucking world. Nobody has ever said this. Nobody. This is your zone of genius. This is what's going to make you $10 million a year. If you listen to me, and this is what you lead your podcast with. You're going to call every episode you go on chaos training. <laughs> I won three memory championships. That's how you're going to do it. Because all that other stuff is great, but it's terrible marketing. This is brilliant marketing. But well done. Um, I've got a whole John podcast on, on the on the chaos training, a whole podcast on that too. So it's out there for you if you're interested more. Well, absolutely. I'll check it out. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was, that was a great way to uh, pique my interest right at the end. God bless you, man. Well done. Uh, John Graham, thanks for coming on the show, brother. It was awesome, man. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate you. Yeah, you bet. And that wraps up another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. To find out more about today's incredible guest, chaos training champion of memory himself, the one and only John Graham. Go to the show notes at thethoughtleaderrevolution.com or check it out at wherever you happen to listen to this episode, be it iTunes, Spotify, Audible, Google Play, YouTube, Rumble, or what have you. Until next time, goodbye. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.